Good morning. As we uh, gather together, I welcome you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We are celebrating Shepherd Sunday this morning, so you see we have all of our best sheepy stuffed animals, right? What's this one's name? Sheepy? Uh, no, this is this is Lamb Lamb, and this big guy is Lamb Lamb. This is Lamb Lamb. This is Lamb Lamb. And we have some of our other sheepies here this morning, huh? And this little lamb just tripped and fell and scraped her knee. So we're going to be giving her some, we're going to be giving her some cuddles this morning. Huh? Huh? But it is my joy to have you uh, with us here in our home. Hopefully, maybe, possibly for the last time. Um, we're talking about returning to worship in person May 2nd. However, um, we're also looking at um, how to keep this online presence going because we recognize that there are some of you out there who simply can't make it to church every day or every day, <laughs> who can't make it to church every week. Um, and we want to be able to give you the opportunity to still participate in the worship life of the church. Um, so we're working on uh, whether or not we're going to continue the YouTube videos, whether we're going to try live streaming. Um, we'll, we'll see how that goes, but uh, we're, we're certainly moving forward. Other announcements and prayer requests can be found um, in the, in the uh, email that you'll get. Um, yeah. So let's be called to worship this morning. Would you join me in the in the twenty third Psalm? It's it's printed um, in the in the worship email responsively, but you can say as much of it as you want. The Lord's my shepherd; I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for His name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup overfloweth. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Our first hymn this morning, I believe, is The Lord's My Shepherd. Yep, number 50 in the blue hymnal, The Lord's My Shepherd, I Shall Not Want. You gonna sing with me? You don't have to sing with me. You can listen to me sing. You wanna scooch closer? Oh, 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 oh.
Knowing how easy it is to wander from the paths of living a life of love, aware of all of the dark and shadowed valleys that we find ourselves wandering through, remembering how we have sometimes failed to place our trust in God, how can we not come to God with our confessions? So would you join me in the prayer of confession this morning? Let's pray. Loving God, we confess that we have failed at loving as you love. We want to love others. We try to love others. But our love is so precious to us that we feel that we have to protect ourselves first. And so we save our love for the very few and try not to see the, the face of your son Jesus in the face of others. We confess that we are unwilling to follow Jesus example all the way to the end. Forgive us when we fail. Help us to get up, overcome our fears and try again. In the name of our Lord, our guide, our shepherd, Jesus Christ. Amen. This is the good news. God is going to walk in us in every moment in green pastures when we're having the best day of our lives, and in deep valleys whenever we scrape our knees, huh? Even right in front of our enemies, God is going to walk with us in every moment. God is going to fill us with goodness and mercy. God is going to bring us home to live forever. So rejoice in the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Amen. Thanks be to God for his love, for his care, for his patience, and for his power in our lives. Not just in our lives, but all the way back into the past and all the way into the future. God's power and love are with us. Amen. Well, let's see. Do you want to read some? We're going to read some scripture. Okay. So I've got to reach up. I've got to reach up. Switch my paper. Okay. I'm going to switch my paper. We're going to get my Bible. We're going to see who called while we're recording worship. Hopefully it's not an emergency. Nope, not an emergency. Okay. As we approach the word this morning, would you join me in the prayer for illumination? Let's pray. Lord God, good shepherd, by the leading of your spirit, help us to listen to your voice and follow in your paths all the days of our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. You okay? Mm -hmm. Okay, just checking in. All right, our first scripture lesson to do this morning. Let's see if we can find it here, AJ. It's going to be 1 John chapter 3. Look at that tiny, tiny letters. Look at those, AJ. Mm -hmm. Yeah, those aren't big storybook letters, huh? Mm -hmm. The little, little letters packed full of information. So let's begin reading this morning at 1 John, uh, the, uh, John's first letter. Um, not the Gospel of John, but John's first letter, 
chapter 3, beginning at verse 16. We know love by this, that he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for one another. How does God's love abide in anyone who has the world's goods and sees a brother or sister in need and yet refuses to help? Little children, let us love, not in word or speech, but in truth and action. And by this we will know that we are from the truth and will reassure our hearts before him whenever our hearts condemn us. For God is greater than our hearts, and God knows everything. Beloved, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have boldness before God, and we receive from him whatever we ask, because we obey his commandments and do what pleases him. And this is his commandment. It's uh, the reason that Maundy Thursday is called Maundy, meaning to command. Maundy Thursday, Jesus gives this commandment to his disciples uh, at the Last Supper in the Gospel of John. And this is his commandment, that we should believe in the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another, just as he has commanded us. All who obey his commandments abide in him, and he abides in them. And by this we know that he abides in us, by the spirit that he has given us. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Lynn has some special music for us this morning, so we're going to uh, pause and, and listen to that, um, and I hope you enjoy it. It's called um, That Sheep May Safely Graze. Safely graze on the sea. 
Our gospel lesson this morning is from the Gospel of John. Do, do, do. Chapter 10. We're going to begin at verse 11. Let's see here. Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because a hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own and they... I know my own, and my own know me, just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason, the Father loves me because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it up again. I have received this command from my Father. Here ends the reading of God's holy word for us today. What do you think? Do you want a break? You ready to get up? Okay. You don't have to. You can stay here, but I'm about to start my sermon. So it's up to you. You want to go cuddle on that couch with Dad? Mm -hmm. Yeah, go ahead. Take Lam Lam with you. Lam Lam! Good girl. There we go. Okay. Oh, man, she's got the unicorn blanket. She is, she is going to be comfed out over there. Over the past, oh, probably, I don't know, maybe even six years, maybe even as long as, as AJ's been alive, I've been following an author on the internet uh, whose name is James Rebanks. Um, he, he's, he's published a few books now. Um, the latest is about uh, taking these sort of traditional English country farms, which uh, he, uh, he owns one, um, and turning it, keeping it as a farm, but also turning it into more of like a nature sanctuary with, with more natural features uh, that a variety of wildlife and plant life uh, can live in harmony with his, with his flock of sheep, with his herd of cows. Um, but I started following him uh, because his border collie sheepdog, like this one here, we had to include a sheepdog here today, his border collie sheepdog had puppies. And he posted some pictures, and I, well, I think we're all a sucker for a good puppy picture. So he's a shepherd. And his first book is called A Shepherd's Life. I think his second book is called English Pastoral or English pastoral. In England's Lake District, he raises Swaledale sheep, Herdwick sheep um, for meat. And he also raises, I think they're called, I can't remember what the official name is, but they're called Belties, uh, which are cows that have this white uh, belt around them um, in, their, in their fur and in their skin tone. And he raises all of these animals for meat. He's just a guy with an all-terrain vehicle and a cell phone with a good camera and a Twitter account where he posts beautiful pictures of the landscape and the changes it's going through and his life and of his animals. And I've been reading his dispatches from his life for a long time now and this man lays down his life for his sheep on a daily basis. We're into lambing season right now. Um, so since, you know, since Easter, maybe even a little before Easter, you've been getting a lot of pictures of these, 
adorable black lambs and occasionally of, you know, if it's snowing, you'll get these snow covered hills with, with all of these lambs sort of uh, like huddled with their moms. And that's why he raises these particular breeds of sheep. They're very hardy. They're able to stay out there forever. Um, you just get posts all the time on Twitter because right now during lambing season, he's up like 22 out of every 24 hours. He's posting all the time. He doesn't know when he's going to sleep next because he doesn't know when he won't have a sheep who's lambing. He's got a young family. He's got uh, one child who's, who's three years old. Um, he's got, I think, two other children. And you wouldn't know it because the only time when we see pictures of his family is if they're out in the meadows and out in the fields helping him. Uh, he just posted the other day of when his three-year-old was helping him rescue some lambs and reunite them with their mother and this three-year-old has lambs up under his arms and you're like oh no, no. <laughs> but he trusts him he you know how else is he gonna learn um but he never sees his family because he's always out in the fields and out in the meadows kind of constantly running this circuit around miles of countryside looking for sheep who have hidden themselves um, because they're trying to protect their new lambs. Um, he posts pictures of uh, his family helping to deliver uh, their first lamb. He, he gets really emotional. He screams and he wails in sort of all capital letters when he loses a sheep or he loses her lamb in a difficult birth. He, he posts with the pride of a father. Now, to me, one sheep looks like another. But he knows almost immediately which lambs are going to have great potential to be the perfect specimens at this fall's agricultural shows. He knows them all by name. There's a whole naming system that mom has a name that begins with B so her babies have to have names that begin with B and he knows them all he even names the ones that he's not sure are going to make it one year all the sheep have names that begin with H and there was a lamb he wasn't sure wasn't going to make it so he named her Hannah that's one of the many ways that he keeps track of how old they are. If you've got a B name, you were born this year. I think B is, is this year. If you've got an H, you were born last year, a couple years ago. I have no doubt that this man would lay down his life for his sheep if it ever came to that. Because he already has. He gets asked all the time, why don't you do more book tours? Why don't you do more readings? You know, because that's really where your money's being made, is in, in being a New York Times best-selling author. And his answer is always, well, who's going to care for the sheep? Well, but that's not making you as much money as your New York Times best-selling memoirs. So why don't you focus on your writing? And to him, it's like, that question doesn't even make sense. Because you can't just leave the sheep. I have no doubt that he would lay down his life for, this, for his sheep. Because he already has. He's laid down everything else in his life. He asks his family, his children, to stop their lives to lay down their lives for the sheep. And they will, just as he did when his father asked, son, will you lay down your life for these sheep? And just as his father asked, and his father asked, 
your life will be the sheep and everything else will be laid aside at one point or another for the sheep. Because that's what you do in this family. Brothers and sisters in Christ, children of God, family of God, those who pray to our Father who art in heaven. Will you join the family business? Well, not so much the family business, but the family's way of life, of laying down our life for the sheep. The letter of 1 John says we ought to, that we know love by the fact that Jesus laid down his life for us and that we are to lay down our lives for one another. We ought to lay down our lives for one another. But that means a life of putting ourselves last. Not just in life and death situations, but a daily laying aside of what we'd rather be doing. Sometimes what would be genuinely the best thing for us or for our children. Putting ourselves last, daily laying aside what we want to do. And John's tough. He doesn't let us off the hook. Let us love not in word or speech, but in truth and action. There is no going halfway in this shepherd's life. There's no saying with our lips that we love and then not backing up those words with loving action. We either lay down our life for the sheep or we let other reasons Reasons that we would consider good reasons, legitimate reasons, get in the way. We either lay down our life for the sheep or we let other reasons get in the way. But God looks at us like, really? That's what you're choosing to hold on to? One of my favorite scriptures is from uh, the second chapter of Philippians, where Christ, equal with God. Think about what that means. Think about what equality with God means. The all-knowing stuff, the all-powerful stuff, the not-required-to-die immortality stuff. Christ, equal with God, chooses to empty himself into the form of a human. And not just into the form of a human, into the form of a servant. Because it's when he's in that human form that he humbles himself again, even more, being willing to die on the cross. It was Jesus's God-given right not to die. The one human, the only one without sin, the one human who didn't earn what Paul calls the wages of death. He lays down his God-given right for the sheep, purely for our benefit. When we were yet sinners, Paul says. So before we deserved it, before we knew what we were doing, Jesus lays down his rights. He lays down his life. He lays down the way he wants things to be, all for the betterment and the benefit of us. That is daily loving in action. That's what we're called to do. Jesus calls us to give up our rights for others. And we spend our time trying to hold on to them. Jesus calls us to give up our seat and we try to keep it. 
Jesus calls us to lay down our lives so that someone else might be lifted up and we struggle because we have difficulty saying that another life matters more than ours, more than our family's life. We are called to follow the shepherd into the family business, into the business of our father, into the business of our brother Christ. It's the business of laying down our lives for the sheep, not just in life or death moments, but in the daily rhythms of our lives. In the small actions, we are called to love indiscriminately before they deserve it. We are called to love everyone through our actions, not just our words. And that's not easy. There's been a, a popular short video clip going around the internet the past two weeks. I'm going to try to include it in the video. Um, if not, I'm going to put a link to it um, in, the, in the YouTube uh, description and in the email. But there's been this wonderful short clip going around from the internet the past two weeks, which basically sums up the daily lives of shepherds and what our daily lives sometimes look like as shepherds, as apprentice shepherds, as helper shepherds. So here's this young shepherd boy, probably about 11 to 14. And you see how he's, he's struggling to pull the sheep out of the ravine. And then, yay, he finally gets the sheep out of the ravine. Yep. <laughs> Those are the sheep we're called to work with. Even those sheep, the ones who seemingly on purpose and with the joy and glee of that planned leap, what looks like a planned intentional leap, make more work for us. And we're going to be called to put our love into action yet again. There is no way that that young shepherd is going to leave that sheep even though that sheep chose, certainly looks like they chose, to jump in that ravine again. To put our love into action the way Jesus did means laying aside so much, so much, so much of what we think we want So much of what we think we need. Laying aside so much out of thanks for the love that Jesus has shown us. It's a brave action. It truly is an act of faith and trust in God. And we're going to ask God today to give us all of those things, the bravery and the faith and the trust to do so. May we all have that bravery. May we all have that trust in God. May we all have enough faith in God's goodness and in God's plans for us that we may be able to lay down our lives daily for the sheep. Amen. Our hymn is, let's see, number 284 in the blue hymnal. They'll know we are Christians by our love.
Christians by our love, by our love. Yes, they'll know we are Christians by our love. We will work with each other. We will work side by side. We will work with each other. We will work side by side. And we'll guard each one's dignity and save each one's pride. And they'll know we are Christians by our love, by our love. Yes, they'll know we are Christians by our love. All praise to the Father from whom all things come. And to praise to Christ Jesus, his only Son. And all praise to the Spirit who makes us one. And they'll know we are Christians by our love, by our love. Yes, they'll know we are Christians by our love. Would you join me as we declare our faith, as we declare our lineage as members of the family of God? Let's declare what we believe using the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let's come to our time of prayer this morning. Let's pray. Gracious God, loving God, we find it difficult uh, to choose sometimes between living the way of Christ and all of those other responsibilities that pull us. Help us to find that the way of Christ in which we are laying down our lives is the right way to live. Because as we are laying down our lives for others, others are laying down their lives for us. God, it doesn't feel like that way yet. Sometimes it feels like the only people we deal with are greedy sheep. who get right back into trouble. But God, help us to look forward to your future. Give us the bravery and the faith and the trust in you to know that there will one day be a day when all are willing to lay down their lives For the good of another. God help us as we tend our little flock. Help us to understand as Jesus said in the Gospel of John that one day there will only be one flock and that therefore we are to care for all God's sheep. All of Christ's flock, the whole world.
God, we lift up our care for the flock today in our prayers. We pray for the lambs who are wounded. We pray for the lambs who are stuck, who are lost, who are full of fear because they are protecting their own lambs. We give you thanks when a sheep is healed, when a sheep is found, when a sheep begins to trust, when a sheep learns your voice and learns the many different ways in which you call them. We give you thanks for the guidance that you give us. We give you thanks for the growth that you put in us so that we may become better people that we may become better followers, that we may grow in faith, that we may grow in trust. Help us to love, not just with our words and our prayers, but with our actions. We pray these things in Jesus' name, saying together the family prayer, our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our final hymn this morning. This was an easy hymn picking week. <laughs> our hymn, our final hymn is going to be um, one that I did not mark, of course. Let's see here. It's going to be uh, My Shepherd Will Supply My Need. Let me find it here. And Justin's going to find it on the phone. <laughs> There it is, 803. Mm -hmm. Okay. My shadow.
my cup with blessings overflows. Your oil anoints my head. The sure provisions of my God attend me all my days. Oh, may your house be my abode and all my works be praise. There would I find a settled rest while others go and come. No more a stranger or a guest, but like a child AJ, I want to congratulate you. You did it. You made it all the way through the service. Come on over here. Like a child at home. <laughs> With all of her stuffed animals and blankies. Thank you for helping me with church today. Come here. Come give me a hug while I do the benediction. You ready? So go out to be bold before God. Speak up for all the people who plead and yearn for healing and hope. Go to shepherd Jesus' sisters and brothers. Go to shepherd all of God's children. Risk your lives for justice. Serve the outcast. Go anoint others with the Holy Spirit. Go bring goodness and mercy to all those lives that need restoring. And may the peace of the Lord Christ go with you wherever God may send you. And may God guide you through the wilderness and shelter you in storms. And may God bring you back, not into these doors, but into our regular worship home. Rejoicing in the new wonders that you have known throughout this past year. We'll see you again. May God bless. Amen.